it's daily light. And as is my custom, whenever I do a whoops, I go ahead and tell people, we're not perfect, we just record, and if it happens that it turns out to be a blessing to a person, great. If not, we re-record it over, and if it's like just a few seconds ago, the wrong day and reading from it, just say, oh well. And then let God choose to have us share our honesty and our truth between us that there should not be that fear of being able to admit mistakes, whether they be transgressions, which is simply crossing over the line, so to speak, in your mind of something that you shouldn't do and that if you continue along that way, you'll probably produce sin because you've transgressed something, or whether it be sin itself, whether you've actually participated in an action or an attitude in your heart and caused it to become a separation between you and God, or whether it be any other revelation that God is bringing to the surface that he wants you to deal with out here so that you can say, yes, I am a sinner. I need forgiveness. I need mercy. I need grace. So here, God, take it. And thank you for dying on the cross for all that I have ever done and ever will do and all that you have applied to me by your mercy. And I thank you, God, that you have saved me. And that is why sharing emotionals is so important about the emotion sometimes as well as the devotion about our relationship with God. We need to be truthful and honest when we fail Him, as we often do. I fail daily. <laughs> Shocking? Not really. And <laughs> get to know me. But because I do, I seek to have you involved in caring enough to share with me devotionals so I read through them throughout the entire year as I've made an agreement with not just God but with you to do and to share them and to keep me on target on track and walking with the Lord so what would Jesus say today what profit is there of circumcision much in every way circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your heart if their uncircumcised hearts be humbled and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity then will i remember my covenant with jacob and also my covenant with isaac and also my covenant with abraham will i remember jesus christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of god to confirm the promises made unto the fathers in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Jesus. You, being dead in your sins and the uncircum uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Putting off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful us, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and put on the new man which is after God created in righteousness. When you get saved, when you have no longer become a part of a religious ideal, whether it be a world religion or a man-made religion or a uh, humanistic idea, which is still religion, and you become saved, you should be different than what you were before. Now, you may not see it right away, but gradually God should be bringing it out in you so that others may say of you, I know what he was before, but what he is now is nothing compared to what I see him becoming. And that is a man of God. And that's what God is doing in you. Others are watching. They see it. You might not feel it at the time. The veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to the bottom. And the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. The bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I... He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even 
he shall live by me. Does this offend you? What and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profits nothing. A new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, let us draw near. Sometimes people confuse, you know, the issues of, you know, simple things and make it sound more than it is rather than what it is. And Jesus said, it's spiritual, pretty simple. If you eat my flesh, great. And when he demonstrated that and said, this is my body, do this in remembrance of me. This is my flesh. Do this in remembrance of me. When he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the cup of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. He was foreshadowing and pointing towards the resurrection and the cross where he would die for our sins and that we would likewise honor him by declaring he's coming again and we would remember him by eating his flesh and drinking his blood, which was in pagan times a offering or sacrifice to false gods. But Jesus was demonstrating that Satan that had performed a counterfeit of what God had performed in reality. Satan had used a physical reality to make a pagan practice when God intended for us to have a spiritual reality to make a godly example. You see, there's always a counterfeit that is in the physical realm to what God is doing in the spiritual realm. And the counterfeit is the God of this world, Satan, doing what we can see, touch, and feel, as opposed to what God says is happening in the spiritual realm, which is by faith, according to Jesus, and revealing Him. Whenever there is Christ, there is Antichrist. And the two will counterfeit each other, because one, Jesus is the plan of God from the foundations of the world. The other is the contradiction of God, which was sin and evil, that Satan will lie and deceive and try to steer us away from the reality of God, who is a spirit, and where we are becoming born again of that spirit, and we become one with him. Daily, we ought to, to put it bluntly, celebrate the fact that Jesus died, rose again, and is coming again, literally, in offering bread and wine, and dining with him together, in his word, in action, in deed, and in love.